Welcome, everybody, to the Arizona News Show. I am once again Mr. Negative. And we have Pat, what's my rate, McMasters? <laughs> Ruby is back. Jackie is here. Ruby, welcome back. You've had a two-week absence. And uh, during that two weeks, I didn't know this, and I know you I did. didn't either, but in the somehow in, inside the small print in Jackie's contract, um, she gets paid double when you're gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! Hold on a second. They uh -oh. they get paid. You're gonna have to look. At <laughs> They're no. they, no, get, Pat, they get paid. Pat, Do you realize what kind this. of information I'm giving? And I don't get paid. We we've talked about this, Pat. You know that was the only way we could get ladies to be on the show. So oh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So anyway, we oh, we're still having fun. Funny. Well, uh, the feds jumped in. <laughs> we're going to talk about those changes today, and uh, and then we're going to go over the numbers that we're seeing in the market. January wow. is, at least as far as I was concerned, is not going in the direction that I thought it would. Um, I thought our inventory would start going up, and when I first saw the Cromford index start to come up in December, I was skeptical. I go, ah, it's probably going to turn around in January and maybe flatten out. And, and uh, you guys were the only ones that were correct. So, so I, you know, I'm glad I didn't put my last dollar on it. So, but it, it's it's sitting there. But here's the interesting thing um, of the past seven day moving average, though, and it's we have. 3,701 new listings that have come on and 3,217 go under contract. That's about a thousand higher than what we've been seeing. And only a difference of 484 with total inventory mm -hmm. at 15,500. But you'll see way off here to the right that new listings um, took a pretty significant jump um, today, uh, which, which uh, going into the weekend, by the time we get to Friday, we may see this thing pop up. Now, new contracts are continuing to follow. So the gap between the number of new listings coming on, homes going under contract, is still <clears throat> pretty small, between three and 450 homes. So uh, that simply means there's no downward pressure on pricing as long as that's going on, in my humble opinion. Now, Speaking of sales, the listing success rate got down to a low of 61% in December. The last time we saw that was back in around, oh, 2011. What, um, is that, what does that mean, listing success rate? Just, if you're listing, did you, you get sell it? You listed your house, did you, did, you get it, did you get it sold? Okay. And 60, so right now we're up to 66% from January. Um, but look at what happened after the crash, 23%, 21%. So huh. prior to that, we were falling pretty heavy in 2006. In 2006, we were down to 39%, and prices had not crashed yet in 2006. But all the numbers were there. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing them today. This is list price and sales price. And I wanted to put this up because we actually had a comment where I was saying that our listing pricing has been level and it's starting to come up a little bit. And they made the correct comment and said, yes, but what about the actual sales price? What did it sell at? And uh, uh, they're both going up. So you can see here that our average list price per square foot is $280 in January. And our actual um, close price is $270, so a difference of $10 a square foot. Both of those are starting to increase. So the um, um, the data is kind of showing that things are improving for sellers, but they're not bleak for buyers either. Now, this one is another example of a headline that is kind of clickbaitish. Phoenix sees largest drop Largest drop in home price growth nationwide. So what does that mean to you? Oh, was this a question? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, he's <laughs> keeping us on our toes here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that we saw that oh. homes, you know, basically drop, you know, 
Just what it says. But we're not Price, growing. Prices we're not aren't growing as fast. We're not negative. Right. We're not growing as fast as we were compared to all other cities. But the headline makes you think that that our home prices but, are just through the floor. Oh, but yeah. Rick, it's compared. It's compared to compared and to Phoenix. how we grew before, which was more than most cities. Yeah. Yep. You and, need something to compare and, something to. Yeah, I think we were still up six point nine percent, something like that. And uh, which is above average. Mm -hmm. So, and I think yeah. one of the challenges that we see in this market, people, you know, they buy a, bought a house last year and they, and they go, God, I can't sell. Well, you need a 10% increase in the value of your home just to cover your expenses if you intend to sell, you know, in a year. And real estate doesn't go up 10% a year on average, it goes up about three to four. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't expect after one year to be able to. Right. Turn around and sell it. The other comment that I saw that I see a lot, the, the comments are about greedy sellers. So I'm going to compare this to you buying a car. Pat, if you bought a car and you want to sell it, what price are you going to pick when you go to sell your car? Um, That's another question. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, um <laughs> Well, usually what I do, I mean, I look at Kelly Blue Book and I look at the highest, you know, uh, really, the, I look at the highest private pri private party uh, value. So you're going to price it at market value. Yeah. So how come you're not going to drastically lower the value of the home just for the greater good? Yeah. <laughs> now it's a trick question. Now it's a trick question. Yeah. Well, so when you look at a real estate, you've. You've bought a house. He's keeping us our toes you know, today. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sharp. I, I like this. I, uh, I, so you bought a home <laughs> and you've, you've hung on to it and it's it's made, you know, it looks like it's got some value. You've been tracking yeah. your equity and you want to list it. Um, if you list it at market value, what they're selling for is that greed. No, no, no. I think, no, I think you, no. greed was what You're happened last year. When you had, you know, sellers bumping up, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars over what, you know, that's greedy. But was that the sellers bumping it or the buyers bumping it? it oh yeah, the buyers exactly. You know. Oh, so yeah. it wasn't seller greed. Now, where some of the greed comes in is, and maybe it's just, you know, you're taking advantage of the situation, but you weren't worried about the appraisal. See, the people were writing appraisal language in. You already said flat out you're not going to repair anything. You can't do that now. But when a person owned a home and they want to sell it, they're already looking down the road and going, okay, well, here's where I'm going to move, and it's going to cost me this much to move, and it's going to cost me this much to do this, this, and this. And if you're moving out of state, it gets expensive. So you're kind of depending on the equity that you think you have to help facilitate that move because you've already calculated how much your other down payment is. So, you know, you've got expectations. And so I really want to caution people to, you know, to kind of back away a little bit from the greed mentality that says, you know, this, this market homes are priced high simply because sellers are greedy. Everybody follows the market. Buyers are following the market and the sellers are following the market. And, it was, you uh, know, we saw that was based on, it really comes down to a simple supply demand equation. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, and, it I mean, that and uh, there's still a lot of demand. I mean, once again, our premise you know, behind the scenes is there's still that demand. Like I said, the last couple of months is that there's that group of people that are still, that got pushed out because of the bidding wars that they are still out there. You know, a house well, is Zillow definitely on their, views, on their radar. Yes. Zillow views on listings are not decreasing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, not at all. The saves are like we have one client that tells us what, how many views yeah, and, they, and how many saves are, those are, there are almost sitting back every single day in the wings, just waiting, and they're still looking, still searching, still look. I see it on my website. They're yeah. still out. They haven't stepped forward to make an offer, but there's this. That's just another indication of of pent up demand. Now there's a lot of things that can knock this off the rails. Plenty of things that can do it, but today. The headline was Fed to deliver quarter point rate hike along with one last hawkish sting in the tail. In other words, everybody knew they were going to go up 25 basis points. So really, he was speaking over and over again about 
you know, don't get carried away. This isn't a pivot. We're still hanging in there. We're still going. We're still going to raise rates till we get the job done. And he was just a broken record. I listened to it. And uh, lo and behold, and this is the other thing, is we had a comment uh, earlier in the week that said, yes, but there's a 25 basis point rate hike coming. And I said, yeah, it's baked into the cake. And you can see behind me here what happened to rates today. Yeah, they, they went, went down. down. Yep. How yep. much, Pat? Uh, they, uh, we had... Uh, you know, it was up around 31 basis points. We saw improvement. 25, it ended up, uh, the five and a half coupon, the Treasury was down 11 basis points, 341. So, we, I mean, once again, I mean, we're, let's see if I can, oh, let me just give me this here. I'll try to blow this up a little bit. But we're seeing, I just like the channel that we're in. This is the 200-day moving averaging, 200 moving day average right here. Um, this one was basically the 25, right here. We broke through this this uh, ceiling right here, which is good. We had an interesting day. It, it tested that 200 day, so you can see the, how it tests these levels and then backed off. But we're in this channel. We've been in this channel since November 10th, and uh, here. Um, but you know, we're seeing some nice this channel in here since November, which has been really strong. It's been building a good base. So, like I said, this blue line is a 200 day moving average. So if it busts through that, that's a really good sign. And we got, um, you know, uh, the ADP released the job numbers too today. It was 106,000 jobs versus, I guess it came in, it was supposed to be 175,000. But uh, inflation is de declining. I mean, we're seeing the feds. We're, I think now everybody's just waiting for the feds. You know, in March, that's the next uh, meeting. Um, so you're just going to be seeing, I th hopefully we just trade this channel here. And... Um, I think Barry was saying the next comments from the Fed is, you know, the next push is like, when are the, when's the Fed going to actually admit that inflation is decreasing? I think that'll be kind of the, you know, they're not, they're not well, admitting it yet. Because I watched him today and he goes, yeah, we're, we're seeing progress. And he says, so we're having a lot of discussions about, um, um, you know, how much, when we want to stop. And right now we're not confident enough to say that now's the time to pull back. And he mm -hmm. rattled through a lot of numbers. So people were really grilling him and going, well, what if you go too far? And he said, there's more danger in not going far enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, you touched on, I'm just going to break away here for a second and then come back to you, but because you, you touched on this. And this is this is the expected Fed's, Fed's fund rate by meeting by month. So here's February down here, you know, in the floors. And here's March and here's June. And this is what the bond market is already anticipating. So that means if they go up 0.25 here and 0.25 there, that doesn't mean mortgage rates are going up because they've already baked this in. Does that sound correct? Yep. Yep, pretty much. I mean, that, that's what people just don't ever understand. You, you always get that report, you know, like you had mentioned earlier that, you know, and obviously not everybody's going to understand it. It's not their job. But, uh, yeah, the whatever the Fed does, that's always been baked in about a month, month and a half. But – with any market but what i like about the fact is this market is certainly a lot more stable or you know stable and consistent Allow, like i said once again it goes back to my allows people to make a decision of what they want to do in the next 30 to 40 days of pulling the trigger so yeah yeah um which is it's a good so it's a good thing you showed me a rate that somebody can get with five percent down yeah, yeah let me see here. i'll pull this over here uh, um this was uh, is this ten this ten percent down, next bank. These are rates right now. We're at we're at you know, basically. I'll blow us up a little bit if I can. Uh, come on, Turkey here. Okay, yeah, we're looking at um, five eight seven five is a cost of two hundred two hundred thirty nine dollars for ten percent down on a uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollar purchase. But a, I think it was wow. a seven six seven sixty FICO score. So. Um, I mean, we're down below six once again. Yeah, and you, and you look at it. I mean, you look at it. I mean, here, just just to back it up here. I mean, it's back on an uh, ongoing bet. That doesn't mean you get another dollar. Oh, okay. I thought this was like a monthly dividend thing that you're going to be paying me, but that's okay. Because <laughs> um, uh, the the that's as, as they keep going lower. I thought I was going to keep getting like these uh, residual checks, but I guess not. Um, but I mean, you look at six point eight seven five. I mean, we were talking. 
I mean, uh, I'm sure Ruby and Jackie had, you know, some lenders. I mean, I had one lender I was talking to. I'm not going to mention names, but um, uh, they, it has to do with golf. Um, they, uh, you know, they were quoting 8%. So when you're, let's say I was in the high sixes, you know, back, you know, a couple months ago, you know, your payment principal and interest was 2661. Now you get 5875, let's say 2400. That's a $260 a month difference. Per, per That's month. That's huge. And that definitely is going to make a difference as far as people uh, kind of pulling the trigger a little bit. You know, I've seen differences, like you said, of, um, you know, four or $500 a month now. So it's start. Yeah, yeah. Especially for yeah. the first time home buyers. So, seeing some new builds roll across my email at 4.25, 30-year fixed. Yeah. So it's a definite. Okay. Yeah, like so they, they, they buy they buy forward mm -hmm. contracts. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, but it, it, but their business is going up, which is another you know illustration of a rate driven market. So, um, so ladies, what uh, I mean, it's been a busy couple of weeks for you out there. Um, a lot of you've got more listings, you got more buyer activity, and uh, um, I think I shot you a question said. And you might not have had time to look into it, but what's going on in the over 55 communities? So I'm seeing uh, their inventory is higher than the rest of the valley on a percentage mm -hmm. basis. Isn't that just because of the seasonal nature? Probably. And, and well, like, yeah. I, oh, I was just going to yeah, say, I, I think, think there was a lot ahead, of Jack, sorry. seniors that did not sell during COVID, they held back from doing that. They didn't even come out here to prep the homes. And, and this is just my guess. I don't know for sure, but I noticed that too, that the listings seem to be up a little bit there. Um, but I think it's because a lot of seniors didn't, they were, they were too afraid to come out and put the homes on the market. And that market's never really affected as much. Um, it, it's just kind of does its own thing and so that that's my perception. I don't know. What do you think, Ruby? Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you. I think it's more of a, it's kind of a steady place where um, we didn't have as many coming to visit the Valley over the last few years. And now they're just finally coming out. Well, and the Canadians are finally able to come saying, down. Okay, we can do this mm -hmm. now. That's true too. Or they had a lot of restrictions over the past couple of years. Yeah, that but, makes it, a but it, it's, yeah. Their inventory is not alarmingly high. It's just yeah. that they it has been painstakingly low the past couple of years. Mm -mm. That now when you see four or five for sale signs around your neighborhood, you're freaking out. Like, oh, it's terrible. I, I never... think it's just back to normal. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's normal. Yeah, I went and checked out Sun Lakes. And Sun yeah. Lakes, um, I used to follow that a lot. And uh, they had in their listings, they normally have about, Oh, 125 to 175 this time of year, and I think they were they were kind of knocking close to that. Um, let's see if I can pull it up while I got everybody on the horn here, and see if I'm even close to being right. So then you can send me a dollar. Um, I'm uh, 107, so. Considerably higher than last year, and you can see how low it was down here. You know, it was in the 20s and 30s. I mean, it was just oh, yeah. unbelievable. So when you go from 20s and 30s to 107, you're going to feel like the market is crashing and you're flooded with listings. But Well, here's the but, other thing, uh, too, I think might contribute to it, but I'd have to dig in a little deeper to see. Um, when the investors slowed down, a lot of the fix and flippers, the small-time investors – um, they actually started migrating toward Sun City flips. And so I think just because they're still wanting to buy, but, it, you know, and obviously they probably picked these up 90 days ago, mm -hmm. time to get them, get them ready and put back on the market. My guess would also be some of those flippers that still wanted to do business and was a little concerned because our market looked completely different in October and November than it does right now. I think yeah. they might have been migrating toward that i know of some in fact that were so that's a possibility too i i took a look at open door listings and they have uh 740 uh 
which looks like it's way, way down, but there are a number of homes that are temporarily off market, I think is about 170. So, you know, they did have about 1,100 listings. So they're, it's coming down. So now you look and say, well, you know, they're, they're, they're netting probably about 200 less every month. So they could be out of this inventory pit, you know, within, by, by the end of spring mm -hmm. at their current, current rate of attrition. And, uh, and as long as they make yeah. smart plays now, maybe they'll get uh, where they're not bleeding as much. Well, if they were smart, they'd put them on the market now. We need the inventory. Well, they're fixing them up. They took them off to fix them up. And uh, so they and I, they actually admitted to me, well, we're doing what we should have done in the first place. And they didn't because they couldn't find the labor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the market was hot. They didn't, nobody cared. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's Nobody what does. happens when the markets, you know, people just are sloppy. I mean, I'm, I saw an article that, um, I don't know if you've seen this, Ruby or uh, Jackie, I saw an article about a week ago that there's some buyers that are coming out and uh, with lawsuits because, oh, yeah. you know, the, they overpaid or the inspections or, you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's there's a, there's Different several. I think there's mm -hmm. a half a dozen class action lawsuits against them mm -hmm. from people that sold to them. Um, and so it's, um, you know, kind of like, oh, well, I'm getting sued again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't have really any any new numbers coming out in the next couple of weeks. It's going to probably we're just going to muddle along the same. Yeah, I think so. It, the only thing, my biggest concern is all the misinformation that's out there right now. All the clickbait um, I, I'm seeing, even on the news, you know, the news ran with that Golden Sachs article and it was all over the place. I had clients calling me, uh, sellers that were like, I know, I know the market's crashing. And I'm like, I, I think <laughs> the majority of our going down is in the rearview mirror. Not that we're not going to still possibly correct a little more, but nobody can tell. I mean, it's all going to be based on interest rates and inventory. But there's so much misinformation out there. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't mind Goldman Sachs making a prediction. I mean, that's their job. Yeah. They're entitled to do it. But none of it made any sense. I mean, if you tell me the Phoenix market's going to go down because we project interest rates are going to be 7.5% by April and it's going to kill sales and inventory is going to go to 30,000 then I'm going to say wow that's interesting they could mm -hmm. be right if that happens makes yeah. sense there's but no basis there's article, no basis for it there was nothing in it it was just yeah. an empty sandwich you know mm -hmm. two slices of bread and you open up where's the stuff well, I call it there a different sandwich but I can't I'll be kicked off this uh, channel if I say yeah, that. yeah yeah well you know we I you know the lawyers after uh, <laughs> After that I try to refrain from. You, said you were going to expose yourself. Our lawyers watch this every week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, well, you know, another <laughs> thing is too. I I talked to the you know that that VA appraiser that did a deal recently. Um, you know, he's the appraiser was uh, back a couple days later, but he said he goes he goes God. He, I go, I go. I just asked him. Are you busy? He goes, Yeah. He goes last month, month and a half. It just I was slower than hell uh, a couple months ago because but I just came out of the woodwork. You know this. It, Things pick up. I, that's why I think, you know, once again, I mean, I think prices are going to kind of soften up here maybe a little bit. Uh, you've got buyers have a chance to get in with some seller concessions. Things are tightening up. But I think it's all going to be dependent on rates. Rates uh, mm -hmm. are going to are gonna, are gonna, uh, push, are going to pull this boat. So if we see rates. Rates and inventory. Yeah, yeah. So once again, I mean, if you saw – a move yeah. from six to eight seven five down to you know low six is you know about a two three hundred dollar difference. I mean obviously the low the higher loan amounts you get even bigger moves. But um, you know if you could change your your house payment by four five six hundred dollars by the interest rates, it, it makes it's definitely going to make uh, people you know say okay hey we've got to do something. Yep, that's yep. huge. It's going to be. Oh, it it just it went from. Wild predictions no. of a lot of new inventory coming out in the first of the year to that being so far a non-event. I think the increase in listings that I'm seeing right now are because some people are getting the message that they're actually selling. I was mm -hmm. out somewhere this last week. I was at a restaurant and the table next to me, the guy goes, 
couldn't have picked a worse time to sell a house. And I wanted to lean over and go, actually, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if you price your house right now and it's decent, it's going to sell. And he and was just shaking his hand. Right. And there's places, and you've yeah. got yeah, places to choose difference. from now, too. And um, that's huge. On a non real estate note, have you heard of that green mm-hmm. comet? No. Well, there's a comet that is coming uh, with really close to Earth, like, you know, 26 million miles. Um, and it's it's green. And it's got like a green tail to it. So the peak time to view it are, is tonight and tomorrow night after at about 9.45 p.m. looking to the north. Really? I'm glad you brought that up. Jordan and I love to watch those. Oh. Yeah. So and they said it'll be visible until dawn. Really? So, really? Yeah. So wow. it's, um, they said, oh, you wow. know, binoculars will help okay. it, help you see it better, but you can see it with the naked eye. It'd be kind of tiny, but it's, uh, but it, it, it's green. And yeah. they said, and this will be the last time you'll be able to see that comet. Oh. So once 945? it's 945, that's the yeah. peak, what they're calling the peak time or, or I guess the time when it first appears, not the peak. So, so if I you get up at midnight at, you know, and go for your, Go for your walk around mm. the neighborhood, you know, playing creepy pat. Then you can look to the north. And then... <laughs> yeah, I refrain from staying away. From, uh, yeah, yeah, the older you get, you get creepier. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, just... oh, anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, oh, we got All we right, got too many guys. stories. So. Funny. But, uh, I, Alrighty. I will. I'll, I'll tell you one. Um, I no, not about Pat, but I did an open house in Scottsdale and uh, it was right down in old town. And I found out that he owned this big bar in old town, Scottsdale. I'm not going to say which one it is. And I got done with the open house. I go, well, I'm going to swing by and see what this place is that he owns. And I walk in and I look around and I'm like, I don't know. It's, it, I guess it's okay. And I hear this music across the street, you know? And so I, I got to go, see what's going on over there. I'm going to sit down and have a beer. I go up to the bar, have a beer. It's got this huge swimming pool in it. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking out and it's all these guys that are in like their twenties and thirties and these gals in their bathing suits. And I'm sitting there, I'm going, wow, <laughs> I'm the creepy old guy right now. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hang it. Oh, the and bar is the- a swimming pool? No, the bar was overlooking a swimming pool. It's oh. this big area, and okay. you know, it's like it's a. Um, I, if I'd have gotten the pool, they would have called the authorities. But then one last quick story: I went to the RV show in Quartzsite this past weekend. Drove my travel trailer out there because I had some things I wanted to see, some questions I had. And they have this huge tent; it's almost like a block long. And I thought, man, I'm going to see a lot of stuff. So. I had a lot of questions yeah. about solar and batteries because the first time I ever camped anywhere where I wasn't hooked up and my batteries were almost dead in the morning because I was running my gas furnace. So I go to this table and this vendor's there and he's selling, guess what? Solar panels and batteries. So I wanted to ask him about, well, what kind of batteries should I be looking at? And what would you recommend I upgrade as far as solar panels? Now, his job at the trade show is to do what? Sell solar panels Answer questions. and batteries. Right? Now, if I come up and I can't tell you that this is my first time, you know, boondocking and my batteries ran dead, I've got a 100 watt solar panel on the top. I'm not sure if I need better ones or if my batteries are right. What do you think? What do you think your response would be? Here's another question. Damn, you and your questions are today. Well, you <laughs> I know. God. So you would start explaining to me what kind of products that you have and yeah. maybe make a suggestion. You go, well, Rick, you might want to upgrade to this. Um, here's what lithium batteries do for. You know what he says? He goes, ah, oh, well, it'll get warmer soon. You won't have to worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Next. <laughs> what? <laughs> it must have been because it was the he, end of the show. He must just not like, be on commission. Know. He must be hourly. Yeah. He said, like, I'll be warmer soon. So I go to the next table. I go, man, I don't know anything about solar. What what should I look at? He goes, well, it all depends on what you need. I go, well, I'm, I'm not sure what I need. 
He goes, well, there's plenty of resources out of here. Here's one of our brochures. I go, man, you guys stink. God. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. I've, I know. I've worked well, trade shows today. I would, I would have fired those guys. So those boots cost well, a lot. I can't, can't wait to see you guys uh, next week, and we'll get yep. this yeah. rock and rolling again, and we'll see if those new listings that I'm showing is going to continue its climb. And uh, maybe people are getting optimistic for Super Bowl, yeah. which has nothing to do with real estate. But, you know, that's positive headlines, people moving here. Ooh, I'm going to sell my, you know, put my house up for sale. Because they're not coming to look for houses. They're they're going to go party at an Airbnb and then fly home after the game. So It but, does have you know, an effect sometimes, but it takes sometimes. a year or two for that yeah. effect to transpire. They're not yeah. going to just, oh, yeah, I'm not leaving Phoenix. I'll buy a house now and just shut yeah. mine up. <laughs> Cool. Well, all right, gang. See you next week. All right. Bye. Take care, everybody.